Uh, so this video is uh, on modifying uh, this microscope so it's more usable for uh, the purposes I use a microscope for. Uh, this is a really nice microscope. I grabbed it off of uh, Amazon. It cost just a wee bit over $300 for a stereo microscope with uh, a camera and uh, it's actually pretty decent quality. Uh, the problem with this one for me though is it's mostly a biological microscope. It has a light down here you can turn on. Uh, of course that shines lights up through the sample and then of course you can see it. Uh, really classic when you're doing biology, uh, but not quite as helpful uh, when you do the microscopy I'm doing for uh, my teardown videos, uh, which tend to be engineering related. Um, I'm interested in microphotographs, the silicon dyes and such, not uh, like this one. And uh, where this microscope doesn't do well is, of course, with that because the light source is on the bottom. I basically need a top illuminated microscope. They're also known as uh, metallurgical microscopes. Uh, unfortunately, they're quite a bit more expensive. Uh, if I just pop up a, a listing for the, one of the cheaper uh, uh, metallurgical microscopes, you can see that's uh, about seven, eight hundred dollars. And its big difference here is here. There's basically a, a light source inserted between the uh, eyepiece and the objectives, and it shines lights through some sort of uh, very fancy prism arrangement. Now, uh, what I don't want to do is buy another microscope, quite frankly, um, but I was wondering if I could modify this one. So that's exactly what this video is all about. Uh, I'm going to uh, take advantage of the fact that I bought a, a stereo microscope, and I'm going to inject light down one of the viewports here uh, to create some topside illumination. Okay, mostly a voiceover video because uh, I used metal to fabricate the part, and that's a pretty noisy affair. Uh, I use metal because I need something thermally conductive. Uh, the LED that I'm using for the top side illumination will draw about 3 watts, so I need to conduct that heat out to the uh, atmosphere, and of course metal is a good choice for that. Uh, my first stop was at a uh, company called uh, Metal Supermarkets. They uh, will sell you little batches of metal. Uh, in particular, I got here a, a cylinder of uh, metal cut out 12 inches long, that's about 1.5 inches in diameter. And I chucked it up into my uh, little tiny hobby lathe and I turned it down. I put a shoulder onto it so it would slide into the eyepiece. And then I put some chamfers onto it uh, so it would be easy to handle. And I uh, must admit that's always satisfying work. Uh, next thing up was uh, to use a tailstock and I chucked up a drill bit and I put a hole through the center of it. And that's to pass the electric leads uh, through to the outside. Uh, then I took a, a file here and I filed off a groove basically for the wires could pass through because I need the LED to, uh, to sit flush. And uh, here's the final product. Uh, it was looking okay. Um, next uh, stop was to get the LED attached to the metal. Um, thermally conductive epoxy probably would have been the best, but I just had a, a little tube of inexpensive uh, regular epoxy. Not a super thermally demanding uh, application though, so I just... Uh, attach the LED to the metal uh, using it, uh, resulting in this uh, arrangement here, uh, which is almost complete. Uh, the next thing I needed, though, however, was to uh, create a, a diffuser. When I uh, put this in without the diffuser, I'll just put up a picture. You can see, essentially, the LEDs were uh, too too hot, too bright. They are uh, illuminating the center part uh, really well, but uh, creating uh, really deep shadows. Um, to do that, I, I went off and cut some uh, circular discs out of some uh, white plexiglass. You can see uh, on a, a chuck there, I uh, taped on to a uh, oak holder some uh, plexi. I, I don't have a, a proper face plate that you would normally use for lathe, but uh, it worked okay. Um, and then my next thing I had to do, of course, was to uh, take that uh, uh, plexiglass disc and create a much larger assembly, much thicker assembly. Uh, and the way I did that was to uh, weld them together. Uh, and I truly did use welding. Um, plexiglass uh, is, uh, can be affected by acetone, basically dissolves, and you can take advantage of that. So I essentially painted acetone onto the disc and then uh, stacked them up. And that was important because I wanted a void-free finish, which uh, was optically clear. And uh, th this works really well. It's a really solid technique. So. Uh, eventually that dried up here and essentially I have the assembly. Uh, so just before I slide it into the eyepiece, you can see they're two separate pieces. Uh, what I need to do is uh, uh, attach them together. I decided just to tape them. I turned down the shoulder in the eyepiece just slightly. It's too small. Basically the thickness of some uh, metal tape and that should give me a nice firm fit. So I'll uh, rotate that around the, the cylinder here and uh, then put it into the eyepiece. 
Okay, so here's the final setup. A binocular microscope. One eyepiece has a digital camera into it. The other one, of course, this new top side illuminator that I just created. Uh, on the slide there, I have an integrated circuit. And this is the view of the uh, camera application, which uh, will display, of course, the, uh, the die. Uh, it's black right now because, of course, there's no light. But now if I turn on the power supply, uh, you can see that the camera can now see the die. And uh, let me just zoom into that. And, uh, of course, here's a, a lovely picture of uh, the die and uh, all of its details. And, of course, this is what, the, what I was wanting to do, basically, to illuminate uh, opaque samples. So... Uh, looks like I have a reasonable solution for uh, topside illumination and uh, I have a poor man's metallurgical microscope.